I have spent the last decade collecting every keyboard I could find, and in that time my collection has grown to include small keyboards, big keyboards, this thing. However, despite my best efforts, there is a single keyboard that has continued to elude me to this very day. That is the giant keyboard. It's a fully functional keyboard using giant switches and I really want it, but Razer who made it. Hi, yes, yes, it's me. Um, is there any chance I'd be able to buy that giant keyboard you had at CES? <sighs> no. Okay, no, that's cool, Sorry. right? No, that's cool, that's cool. Honestly, I wasn't expecting them to give it to me, so I really wasn't that upset. And since I couldn't buy one, I spent the last year and 12,000 pounds figuring out how I could make one. Regular keyboards use regular MX style switches, but if we're building a big keyboard like the Razer one, we need big switches. So we'll be using Novel Keys, Big switches. If I'm gonna go through all the effort of building this massive keyboard, I don't think lubing the switches is really much extra, so. The easiest way of doing this. <sighs> oh, yes. Oh. And after almost 10 minutes, I had opened one switch. My victory was very short lived. <sighs> There's so many left. I should have definitely made a big switch switch opener, because this was painful. Have you ever seen. A literal bag of switch parts. This is, this is insane. This is my normal lubing brush, kind of thin. I think this is not going to work for these ones. So... <laughs> oh no, that's... Oh no, that's way too much. Uh, hey presto. I'd almost finished all of the switches, and with five days to go, I felt pretty confident I would finish in time. Or so I thought. You may be wondering why there's a timer in the corner of the screen. Remember that furious rage I was talking about? I wanted to get back at Razer. So instead of just making the same keyboard, I decided to go slightly bigger. Since I hadn't actually seen Razer's keyboard before, I wasn't sure if it was real. So I sent a totally anonymous undercover agent to scope their Singapore headquarters. And it turns out, it's real. Razer built a TKL, so they used 87 of these. But in order to beat them, I need to build a full size keyboard. So I'll just need something in the neighborhood of one, two, three. 110. Thank you very much, Mike from Novel Keys for sending these out. And because again, very petty, I plan to reveal my giant keyboard at Tech Expo that I signed up to six months ago. The only problem is all the parts took way too long to manufacture and now I only have seven days to finish the board before the Tech Expo. Although I had strangely started to feel kind of lightheaded, my throat hurt, and I was really, really tired. I'm sure it's probably nothing serious, right? <coughs> oh God. Have you ever like planned out something, right? It was just gonna be the best thing you've ever done in your life, right? Okay, that's, that's a bit of a stretch, but something you think you've planned everything so perfectly, meticulously that nothing could go wrong and you get COVID. What happened to you or is it just me? I'm just I'm wondering. Okay, it's here. Two days later, I was still recovering, but I was made aware that something had arrived. I'm camera around to show you the truck, but I don't want to DDoS myself. Actually, I'm going to do it anyway. There is the UPS truck. Okay, this is my first time seeing this thing. This is so stupid. I didn't know where the keys were to the other door, and I couldn't really shimmy the crate into the house, so I just called it a day. I ended up spending almost five days recovering, meaning I had, at best, a day and a half to finish the keyboard before the tech expo. And it dawned on me that for the first time in Glasses Company history, I would need help building a keyboard. So, I got just that. I asked around, and the only people I could trick convinced to help me were my friends Fraser and Jamie. So after explaining the situation, and locking the door so they couldn't escape, we got to work on cracking the pallets open. How do we open this? I see screws. Okay, and a one, and a two, and a... No, I'm joking. <laughs> <That's enough. laughs> oh. And honestly, bro, I was not expecting it to be this big. Yo, so Jamie, get a picture of my phone quickly. Yeah, that's the light part. I know the physical measurements. I knew them before we made it, but seeing it in person is just, yeah, that's, uh... it was insane. And after taking out and assembling both parts yeah. of the case, I knew we had a winner on our hands. is what I thought. Okay, so uh, regular keyboards use regular stabilizers. These little tiny dinky things. That's not gonna cut it for a keyboard of this size. So we got these 3D printed without doing a test print. Now, why is that an issue? 
This doesn't fit. Don't even f force in. This is not even the thing that annoys me the most. No, 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 no. Because when I realized that this 3D part didn't fit, I thought, hmm, maybe I should check the other 3D parts. I have my own 3D keycaps printed. It doesn't fit. After I'd finished crying, I got to work on widening the stabilizer holes. Oh, yes. No! Oh! Does it work? That side works. This side doesn't. Oh. There you go. Didn't actually expect that to work. So, recap we have giant switches, now lubed, giant keycaps that don't work, giant case that is like actually really brilliant and giant stabilizers. We're missing one major component. A massive PCB. Oh, hey, look at that. I think the very best part about this, huge PCB, tiny USB port. <laughs> I've managed to fix one of the 3D printed parts, the stabilizers, but I need to get on with mounting the switches, so I left Fraser and Jamie to figure oh. out the keycaps. I've been wondering if this would actually fit on the ironing board. There's no way I can really test this without doing it. Okay, oh, a bag of switches. Yes, yes. Okay, hey, but how do I do the rest of this then? Putting the switches in was surprisingly simple, but you're probably wondering where are the stabilizers you said you fixed? I've opted to not put stabilizers in the keys bigger than one U. Enter, backspace. The reason being is that benefit from it, it's not, they're not big enough to actually topple over. Yeah, it's this and also because they just felt really bad. <laughs> but the one key that will most definitely need it is the space bar. This is a regular 60% keyboard, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. And uh, Oh wow. Uh <gasps> this is the space for holy moly. Take your little 60% away. This is a TKO. It's, it's bigger than the like it's Bro. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the crucible part of the stem and then I'm gonna just glue it directly to the switch. By the way, I didn't even show you the wire. It's not actually metal, it's, uh, it's also PLA. Oh! Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Oh, no. You broke it. I snapped the stabilizer wire. I snapped the stabilizer wire. We'll figure it out. And of course, that was one of the only things I didn't make a spare of, so. It snapped. Team, you snapped. Class is on three. <laughs> As you wait, wait, I know how to fix this. <laughs> no. We tried blue tech and surprise surprise that was not strong enough to lift up the housing insert so we moved on to Hold this up please. I think it's gonna cut. No, like get through it, like like that. I don't like going towards you, that's my point. Can I hold it? Can stop, I if you let stab me, me, I can tank it. Let me just hold it. Please. I'm that guy. Let me just hold it. I'm that guy. The tape was much stronger, but we literally couldn't cut it down to size, so had to move on to Doing? Gluing. Okay. You yeah. put glue on it, and yeah. then you stick the other bit on. Okay, and I just hold it on. Yes, but don't don't force it too much, it and then that like, move it because okay. you want to have it in the position that you want it. In. All right. Okay. Go. Ready. Why are you holding it so high, bro? Why is, it, why is he trying to like precision? <laughs> why is he trying to precision drop it? So down to the sky. It's gone from up here to down here. Okay. 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 You're still not. Oh, what are you doing? Please. Stop, bro. Look. How did you miss? I've never seen the reason of Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Try that, guys. This is gonna go so terribly wrong. Three, two, one. Maybe we should leave it. Oh! And after applying a second layer of glue, it seemed to hold. But as fate would have it, our victory was short-lived. 
since the stabilizers didn't fit in the case. Be careful, the lights may just go out. <laughs> how, okay, no, 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 no. Someone explain to me how my almost 23 years of life, every single decision that I've made led to me standing down 3D printed 16 times stabilizers in the dark <laughs> with a Dremel. How, how, how? Oh, it's literally just that little bit of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And with my stabilizer troubles finally behind me, I should probably test to see if this space bar actually so works. I'm using a wall thinker, <laughs> like like the ET bird. <laughs> it has recoil. <laughs> Have you ever seen this space spot with recoil? <laughs> Chris is zooming. <laughs> the recoil was the least of our problems. The space bar didn't return properly. Or, in actual issue, it could be the switch is too weak. For some reason, we got our weight calculations wrong. I actually think this is too heavy. When it's returning, you should get one click down a one click up, but you just get one click. Like any other switch, you get two clicks. One, two, one, two, one, two. This one, all right, ready? One, it's not returning quickly. Fortunately, I had a genius idea. No, I've got a genius oh, yeah, idea. Oh, mega big switch. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like a bad idea, but I'm all out of good ideas, so. Nice. No. It doesn't compress. <laughs> it's got 0.2 millimeters of travel. The double spring was too strong, so uh, let's try one and a half, maybe. Ooh. One and a half it is. <laughs> soldering giant switches is exactly the same as soldering small switches. It just takes 10 times longer. And that whilst this is taking a while, it's working. He's in freeze dead. Bust. That's a lot of soldering, man. Okay, ready? Escape. F1. F2. F3. F4. F5. F6. F7. A. F8. F9. 0. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. I can't believe it's actually. <laughs> Flawlessly working. Wait for this. Oh, that was really dumb. Oh, it's at least it's working. Oh, you just had to jinx it. Oh. Don't stop pulling, so I see. I said, don't stop pulling. You should be pulling. I am pulling. You both have to be pulling. Oh, come on, man. What do you mean, come on? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's like sort of in with like eight grams of oh, salt. Oh, wait. I think that was already a bad switch. Do you know how I know? Oh. I marked it with that X. Alright, you're soldering iron time. We eventually replaced the 40 switch with a functioning one and. Barely 50% finished with the build, called it a day, and started bright and early the next. At best, we had five, maybe six hours to finish the build. And man, <laughs> we were tired. She gives speech to me. 24 hours ago, I did not think I'd get here. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. And then everything that couldn't go wrong also went wrong. But... Yeah, let's close this out. Let's do it. Motivated by that riveting speech, we got to work on assembling the final half of the keyboard. Oh, okay. There's screws, and then there's screws. Rather. So what's the game plan? Uh, 
got no game pan, I can't lie. I'm just gonna try and screw it in. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, then uh, I'll be very sad. Carry on. Okay, I literally don't have time for this. And now with everything mounted, soldered and screwed together, the only thing that remains is to pay a final visit to the keycaps. Fortunately, every switch came with a keycap, so we just had to figure out a solution for our modifiers. Okay, we are <laughs> many boxes. Uh, it's 3 p.m. The guy coming to pick up the keyboard is coming at 3.30. Half an hour left to super glue all of those keycaps on. I originally wanted to blue tack the keycaps on, but we eventually went with Fraser's more sensible option of hot gluing them on. Oh, we need to make sure we don't, okay. I don't know, I, I, you don't want to get too much because then it will clog up the, cut the switch. Go, go, go. Does it feel solid? Solid enough. Oh. There is a dog, as per usual. Two down, 15 to go, 14 minutes left. Woo! Uh, one a minute. keycaps remaining we wanted to tackle the space bar when there was still enough room to get it in but ran into one no, final problem in. the new space bar switch with its 1.5 springs didn't bottom out all the way meaning that we wouldn't be able to press down the space bar on the stabilizers and the switch at the same time maybe i can push it down hit enough that it raises okay, it so you to go one two three dollops mm -hmm. on left right i think we got a That's the guy that's meant to pick it up. The collection team for the Tech Expo came to collect the keyboard. And all we could really do is give them what we had. We were so close. We were so close to finishing on time. Honestly, there was not much more that we could have done. Unless... Right, you've got the cable. You guys get in the car, I'm looking for my shoes. I followed the collection truck down to the venue, secretly carry the keyboard out and figure out a way to attach the space bar right there and right then. I have never panicked so much when our $3 method didn't work, but in a flash of inspiration, I realized all we had to do was make the switches and the stabilizers the same height, and manned with some cardboard and wire cutters, I tried the last thing I could think of. And yeah, that actually worked. <laughs> so you might have heard at the beginning, but yeah, this keyboard actually did cost me around 12 grand, which is probably the most I've spent on any single thing by a lot. Which is fine, because I had a sponsor for this video, um, who pulled out, uh, and then I got another sponsor for this video, and they also pulled out. <laughs> Crazy, right? <laughs> Which is a bit stressful, because I want to keep doing videos like this every now and then, but they cost a lot, so I'm trying to find other ways to monetize my channel. One of them is making a Discord server, which I've now made, if you guys ever want to chat about keyboards, non-keyboards, and everything in between. But it's also there so I can involve you guys in some of the videos I'm making, um, like the 1P keyboards we did last year, and the Pit My Keyboard we did two years ago now. Well, the lowest Discord tier is literally one dollar, so if 12,000 of you were to sign up now, this keyboard would pay itself off. <laughs> and the last company wouldn't be off to such a terrible start to the year. More videos to come soon. Okay, bye.